What's up guys, it's Mike here with Growing Indoors 365 with a brand new video, uh, basically showing you a little bit of what it takes when I have to clean the tent. Let's take a step back right here. This is the tent for everybody that's new here. My name is Mike, I'm an indoor hydroponic grower. This is, you are tuning into Growing Indoors 365 on YouTube. Make sure to check me out on Growing Indoors 365 at Instagram, as well as growingindoors365.com and Facebook is the same this is what you see after the grow has finished on this top tier right here with three reservoirs across i got my new seedlings right here there's about i think 29 of them maybe 28 i always overgrow one or two because usually one or two die out and i have nine in each one nine by three 27 so that's why i grow just a little extra in case because there's always one sometimes they all thrive sometimes one or two or three don't make it but this is where i am right now uh it's this is the toughest part okay if you have an indoor grow you already know about this this is the toughest part when you're done your grow it's basically removing all the gunk that's collected throughout the entire uh, reservoir uh, emptying out everything cleaning the reservoirs uh, kind of giving the uh the clay pebbles a quick rinse over and cleaning the net pods. It's not fun, okay? There's a lot of glam and glory when you have the, a, a beautiful three reservoir of 27 heads of lettuce, but when it comes down to cleaning, not my favorite part. This is, this is a difficult part. This is a time intensive part. And it's absolutely terrible because after this step, you have to reset up, you have to reset all three reservoirs. You have to take the plants, Put them into each each pod with the pebbles. Oh boy, it's a process, but let me take you through it. Let me go ahead and clean this all up. I'm gonna come back when these are all ready for water. So when it comes to cleaning these reservoirs, it is no easy feat. I mean, literally, I have to bring them into my laundry room. I gotta put them in here. I have my special brush right here and I do some dishwashing soap and it is a big, big pain. I still have these two to go. I already did that one and the covers as well as everything on the inside, all the net pods. It is definitely a process and not fun at all. When it comes to the clay pebbles, what I do is I simply put a large paper towel down and I have this like little ciphering dish that I just run these through the water, kind of throw them around a little bit, clean them up, and then I let them air dry basically overnight. And then they're ready to go again. All right, now that I have all three of these cleaned up, as you can see here, I still have to work on the on the below here. These are really ready to go. I mean, let's take a quick look at what's going on with these. As you can see here, I have a lot of water because I just I just fed these little guys. Look how pretty they are. Looking good overall, health wise, looking real good right here. Really got to get them inside the tubs immediately to start getting the 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 good the good air quality, the good oxygen. So as you can see here, if you guys don't remember, I use these um, these plugs, okay? And you can find these down below. That's where everything is linked that I use for all my grow. Uh, these are usually used for fish tanks and they kind of stick to the sides of fish tanks just like that. But what I do is I put the aerator stones right inside utilizing these little clips. The reason why I do this because before I would just have the aerator stone kind of just sitting on its stomach on here and it would constantly vibrate all the time and that's a sound that you don't want you know i want the system to be as quiet as possible period um so the reality is uh that's why i thought that this would be beneficial let me zoom in a little bit more wow that's a lot of zoom so basically they're really good suction cups you can get them at your local pet shop you know pet smart i'm not sure where you are in the world but and what you have available to you but uh, the links are down below for these two so simply i get a good kind of radius from the front here because this is where the tube will be going into comes in here uh, goes right on here and that's what allows the aeration to come up simply push down simply push down and now it's not going anywhere. As you can see here, it's got a really nice tight grip. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water here. Okay, put water all throughout, all three, and then basically transition all of those into these three reservoirs and we should be good to go. Okay, topping it off a little bit. 
We can pop off each reservoir. This is not fun, nor is it glamorous. I realized that by basically bringing a bucket instead of the water pitchers, I could significantly reduce the amount of work I have to do to keep going up and down the stairs. It would take a substantial amount of pitchers versus a bucket like this. I could basically fill all three reservoirs with four buckets. And that's not a full bucket, but the amount of work needed to bring this down and fill this up, it's significantly less than doing the pitcher route in which case this got a little bit easier, but I still have to wait for this to get filled up. Still have to go up and down the stairs and fill these up. But as you can see here, the reservoirs are now full of water. We got our air storage set up. Now it's time to put in the tubing, get the tubing in, attach the tubing to the pump, and then transport all our seedlings directly into the reservoirs. There he goes. That's the percolation and the type of oxygen that you want to make your plants thrive. I love it. I love it. Let me get more. Uh... What I actually did was from the previous grow, I actually saved some slack. And uh, a lot of times it actually works. Uh, I have the ability to literally reuse what I have used before which is awesome because you know sometimes it's only a little bit that sits basically inside as you can see here this part right here that sits inside the reservoir that's usually where I cut it right around here because this part gets a little funky over a few months of you know uh, over like 50 60 days of kind of sitting in the reservoir but the remaining part that's down here basically this whole slack here is totally fine. So I'm literally, I just reused two pieces. Let's get this one going right here. You're not gonna be able to see it maybe. There we go. Let me bend the camera down a little bit. I might even stop at the store today and see if I could get the bigger ones like this. These smaller ones I picked up on Amazon. And again, the link is down below for the tubing and everything else, the air pumps and everything else that you need to set up or grow like I have. But uh, I bought those because I wasn't sure about the size of them. And what happened was I really needed some new air stones because they are extremely fragile. Okay, you wash them or you mishandle them just a little bit, they'll simply break right in half. They're extremely fragile and uh, you have to really, you know, care for them um, very lightly. All right, so let me get this one situated. We'll go ahead and put the covers on and we're going to start putting the seedlings in. Guys. Uh, literally, I just turned the camera off to um, do a little something here, and look what happened. I, I, I jinxed myself. Look what happened. That's so ridiculous. Literally, was just talking about how fragile these are, and look what happened. It literally snapped in half. That's really frustrating. The good thing is I have another one, but take a look. I mean, this is how, this is what they look like on the inside. Handle these with care, okay? Brand new or old, obviously they get more brittle as they age because they've just been uh, submerged in water for such a long period of time. Kind of loosens their overall stability and durability. All right, note to self. Well, here they are. You know, time to time, what I like to do is I like to take the chopstick and uh, kind of push these back in a little bit because during the, uh, during the time when I put these uh, seedlings in, you know, they might have really long stems. Now, why do they have really long stems? It's because I left them in that little dish for a little too long. So they get a little leggy sometimes based on how they start to develop and how they make their way up. So what I simply do is very gently, I readjust them. I bring them down just a little bit into the rock wool. Not all, but the ones that I feel that need it. 
I just go a little bit. Just give them a little push so they get snug inside. And that's really it. And then we could really start the transition into the actual reservoirs, what these are in. You know, it's it's an interesting way of doing it. It's not the most efficient way of doing it, I can tell you that much. But it works for me. And I like to just settle them right back in there. Let them fall right in there. Get snug, get relaxed. And after this, once I actually put them all into the reservoirs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit them with a direct hit of a little bit of the, uh, the root development and um, some really nice pH water to really um, energize that root uh, to start for the full development. All right, so <clears throat> I'm in the process of now adding all of the seedlings into the uh, reservoirs. As you can see here, you know, initially, what I would do is, as you can see here in the net pod, I would usually put uh, some clay pebbles at the bottom here. Then I'm adding the rock wool, and then I'll add clay pebbles around the perimeter. This is honestly deep, but the reason why I do like this method, okay, and one of the good reasons why I use rock wool is because it absorbs nutrients as well as water and provides root development because the root kind of comes right out of here as that oxygen, all that all that water percolation is coming to it. But in this case, instead of having rocks in this significant portion right here, right? This gets closer to the water, continuously remains saturated, and allows much quicker absorption to the root. I really like this. I usually don't do this, but I'm kind of feeling a little lazy today. And I just, you know, I think this is this might be a better method in general. So that's what I'm doing. and I'm, as you guys can see here, I've completed that. And I'm, all, I'm almost thinking like, why not just simply take a plant and just drop it in there, you know, and just leave it like that. Obviously the reason is it moves around. So that's truly not ideal. Preferably as it develops and it gets a little larger, there's gonna be some, some sway. But all you need is, I mean, the only reason that we use these pebbles is to keep the rock wool steady. There is, I mean, if you know something else that I don't, that is the only reason that we use them, okay? And that's really it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up, okay? I think today is Wednesday. The holiday weekend for everybody in the US is approaching. So I hope everybody's, uh, you know, preparing. Uh, obviously this was done over a course of a few days. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, please hit the bell notification button. This way, the only thing that happens is you get an email notification letting you know that a most recent video has been posted. If you're interested in any of the equipment I use, all the links are down below. I did all the research for you. I went ahead and reviewed different types of products to make sure that they meet a certain standard. And that's what I use on a daily basis when I'm creating and maintaining my indoor grow, my indoor hydroponic grow. So, if you want to learn more, make sure to hit the links down below. If you want, ideally, there's great questions being continuously asked on our Facebook channel, which is facebook.com backslash Growing Indoors 365. You can find some additional details on growingindoors365.com, and I would really appreciate you guys joining the Instagram. So, Instagram backslash Growing Indoors 365. I look forward to... Uh, creating more content for you guys and continuously educating you on how to maintain your own indoor hydroponic grow. All right, see you guys soon, probably after the holidays. I hope everybody's safe, keeping safe, keep on growing, and I'll see you guys soon.